Thank you for coming. We are the KMS Club at FBR, and we come from Lima, Peru. And my name is Jimena. I am the former president of KMS. And yeah, it's me. My name is Regina Rodriguez. I'm Lucia Giuliani. Um, I'm Emily Townsend, and I was the former treasurer. And I'm Saori Shia. I was the former secretary of KMS. Oh, we are all seniors. Yeah. So for our presentation, the two global issues that we are focusing on is poverty and education for all. Um, we are proposing CREAMAS as a solution to poverty and, and lack of education. This is because people who generally live in poverty do not have access to, an ed to a proper education. And this puts them at a disadvantage later on in life, but this can also transmit to their children because children with uneducated parents often don't understand the importance of education. Thomas Jefferson once said, knowledge is power. And we believe that Crea Mas allows children that, like Crea Mas is a program that allows children to gain this power and be able to um, achieve their goals later on in life. Um, a quote that we found that we think really shows this message that Crea Mas has is this quote, um, the direction in which education starts in man will determine his future life. And like Regina was saying, we really do think that education can point people in the right direction, and Kremos is helping to do that. So what is the importance of education? So for me personally, I think education is important for personal achievement. So what we learn in school might not be what we, we want to do later on in life, but the skills that we learn in school are essential to achieving our goals later on in life. And of course, we won't like every aspect of school, but school help us, helps us understand the aspects that we do like and take part in the courses that we do like in order to later on in life decide who we want to become. We also believe that having well-rounded education is important because younger generations and our generations are the future leaders of our own countries. So not only do we need to be emotionally prepared to do this, but we have to be mentally prepared. So this is why organizations like Crea Mas are determined to make education their priority. Now to show you like a real life example of how education has helped uh, lives, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna tell you a little story about my dad. Um, uh, growing up, he came from a less fortunate background than all of us. He didn't have the opportunity to go to such good schools like we do. Um, he went to a public school in Peru and most, most times the public schools aren't that good in Peru. And however, he really loved learning and he really loved um, uh, imp challenging his mind and his skills and he graduated top of his class, managed to go to a really good school in Peru called San Marcos. Through that, he got a full ride to a, a college in the United States, which was unheard of uh, many times uh, for people who went to public school. And he managed to come back and uh, achieve many uh, goals that he had such as working in big four uh, auditing firms all around the world. And he was able to come back to Peru and use his love of education and auditing to try and, and show this to uh, the younger generation at his alma mater. So currently, he's teaching again um, at the school he went to, and he's trying to uh, expand the love of learning in other schools. OK, so for this reason, we are mo motivated to be involved in CREAMAS. And what CREAMAS is, is an international nonprofit organization that believes that through education, um, sustainable development can be achieved in the future. And, well, volunteers are called CREANDOS, and they donate um, 12 Saturdays, plus the time it takes for training. And it is a really nice experience, and we get to teach and show children in public schools. Here's a picture. Okay, so this is Feria del Dia number three. This is the, um, the school where we volunteer. And what is um, shocking about this is that it's only 25 minutes away from the school, which makes it more impacting because it's a, um, I don't know, a big contrast. Um, because in our school we have a lot of resources and then we go here and it's really different. And I think um, seeing this has motivated us to like continue and um, has made us really passionate about what we do. <coughs> so we're gonna show you a small video 
Um, the video is in Spanish, but it has subtitles, so like if you don't understand Spanish, <coughs> please read it. Um, but basically what the video outlines is like the importance of education, the love of education, and the, okay. and the dream that many children have of receiving ed education. Cuando un niño conoce a alguien que lo motiva, lo inspira, se empieza a formar un sueño. El sueño de desarrollar una habilidad única. El sueño de ser grande. El sueño de vivir un futuro más allá del que imaginamos. Por eso, y además, trabajamos para tender un puente en el sector educativo. Un puente que une a niños en riesgo social con jóvenes agentes de cambio. Para que un día ya no hablemos de sueños, sino de realidades. Mantengamos el sueño vivo. Crea más. Creamos porque creemos. Begin. It began in 2003 in Santiago, Chile, and in 2009 there was a global competitive leadership program in Georgetown, which a Peruvian named Luis Star, who studied in an all-boys school in Lima, uh, attended and found out about this amazing organization called Creamas in Chile. This is when he decided to bring it to Lima, and in 2010 this this uh, began. So it began with 65 creandos, which are the volunteers, and 400 students. And then a year later, it increased to 185 creandos and 650 kids. Today, there are 3,000 kids who are being benefited and 7,000 classes being taught and 125,000 hours which are being donated right now by volunteers. So, as we mentioned before, Crea Mas is currently um, in three countries, Peru, Chile, and Brazil. Um, in both Peru and Brazil, they are operating in three different schools. In Chile, uh, there's only one so far. Um, we hope that after this presentation, you you feel a little bit inspired, but um, we first want to talk about how Peru came to our school. Or, sorry, how Crea Mas came to our school in Peru. Um, so, and Luis Miguel, uh, wanted more student involvement, wanted more community help. So he presented Gramas as a club to our school in 2010. He uh, presented it to the board of directors. And since then, since 2010, we have grown and we have helped uh, Gramas grow and flourish as an NGO that helps to contribute to. Yeah, it is now one of the biggest clubs in our school. Okay, so what does um, Creamas require from their volunteers? And, well, ha, like a reason why Creamas has been so successful in our school is because anyone can join Creamas. So as long as you're passionate and committed, you're welcome to become part of um, this great project. So you can be 15 or um, 50, it's all right. So, so each Weekend before, I mean, one weekend before we begin going to the schools, we have capacitaciones, which are trainings. So what do they teach us here? They teach us how to be both mentally and emotionally prepared. And the reason why they do this is because we have international volunteers as well, which are not usually exposed to all this poverty. Also, Creamas teaches us that Creamas is one, and we all work as a team. 
So they teach us how to co-work with one another, they, they teach us how to support one another, and they teach us how to work with one another. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so one of the activities that we do in this Capacitaciones is called a positivity activity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show it to you guys. So what you will say, you have to think of something that you don't particularly like. For example, I don't like bugs, but I say it in a positive way. So I say, I don't like bugs, I mean, I love bugs because they help the ecosystem, or they're part of the ecosystem. So you say it with a, like a positive, yeah, thing. So if you could have a, I mean, we could have five, five volunteers. Yeah. Think about yeah, it. Yeah, you can think about yeah. it. And yeah. I'll go first. All right. So I'm supposed to say something that I don't like because certainly this is monitored. Yeah. Yes. So I definitely don't like it when my students are frightened of something. Mm -hmm. But I find it really, really funny when Sarah is scared of bugs and we're in a kayak in a river and a giant <laughs> spider is walking on the water <laughs> and it just bashes out a little bit. I love to do math HL because it will help me in my future. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, what did you feel when you were saying this stuff to the ones that volunteered? It made me take a difficult situation and feel better about it by focusing on the positive. Yeah, exactly. So, that's their goal. That's what Kriya Math teaches us. They teach us how to have this positive mentality and energy because the more positive we are and the more positive we are doing these weeks that we go to teach, then we will transmit that positive energy to the children. So we'll have, it's a win-win situation and it's positivity all around. Mm -hmm. So the science behind the power of positive thinking. So in the, um, there's something called neuroplasticity that basically is the changes that occur in your brain as a result of a cognitive ability. And basically the thinking positively increases the size of your brain that is engaging in positive thinking. And this is why it's scientifically proven that having a positive attitude does in fact increase your mood and it makes you happier. And the one quote that we kind of like related to this is fake it till you make it because a lot of people like use this quote in their lives. And I mean, it really, this shows that that quote really does have value and meaning to it. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the significance of hearing loss. And um, as teachers to these kids, we know that they won't always become experts in like math, art, or English. Even though we really hope and believe that they could, we know that they won't. But we're trying to teach them more than just math or English. We're trying to teach them the values, like the pillars we, we told you earlier, and also, most importantly, a love of education. Um, in Peru, from primary school to secondary school, attendance drops from 93% to 73% nationally, and 92% to 56% in rural areas. And this shows that there's a huge dropout rate and that it's, it needs to, the statistics need to be better. And another um, important aspect of hearing loss is that it allows everyone to contribute. Like we said earlier, you don't have to have any sort of formal education in, I think that's not it, not <laughs> any form of um, experience teaching. You can just go to the training and be prepared to teach these kids. And that's really nice because it helps us to make connections with university students and mothers who want to also help with the cause of education in Peru. Okay, so these are the statistics of Peruvian education. It's based on what UNICEF has provided. So as we can see, in 2007, 16% of primary children reached a sufficient level in reading. And also, 7% of the children reached a sufficient level in math. But after, we can see that that percentage has increased to 30%, which su reached that sufficient level of reading comprehension, and 13% reached a sufficient mm -hmm. level in math. This is the amount of children who were found to not be attending to any type of um, educational system. So the, the reason why we only have this updated until 2011 is because 
UNICEF has still not posted the most recent information. But Peru's government is investing so much in education because they have now figured out that it's really important and it's what actually is going to help our country. So they have let, um, they have let organizations like Crea Mas do their job. And it's really thanks to those types of organizations and the time that the government has um, invested that these statistics are improving. Now we're going to do our second activity. It's kind of like a simulation of what we may have to go through when we have to do our um, lesson plans, basically. So there's 30 of you, and we're going to split you up into five, six people groups. Okay. So five, that you're part of this. Can you talk? Yes. Okay, you five? You just so, so um, actually, really quickly, Emily, right. can you take start at the end here at one? So no, but it'll be part. Can you just like, play? Yes. Yeah. Say just one. So it's six, like the that's first six, six people. Okay, so we're going to give you a scenario card, and then you're going to have to use the scenario with whatever materials it gives you on there to create something, a lesson that is educational and fun. And then you will have four, about four minutes to plan, and then one minute to present each group. So group one presents to group two, two to three, et cetera, et cetera. We will also be putting music so that, because okay. usually one, two, when you're three, four, preparing five. stuff in class, you will be sitting <laughs> You will be in a quiet area. So the music is really supposed to make you guys feel as if you were in an actual classroom with all the noise that the children make. So. If anyone needs help, please feel free to ask questions. You will have four minutes to plan and then. This must be a Thank you. 
the definite integral between zero and three of seven. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Take it Go add the subtraction. No, it's fine. Okay, two squared. What? Two squared. One over one. Three times two. What? Three times two. 18 minus 3, yeah. and 3 times 4. Bingo. 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 Very much guidance towards what we're teaching. Like we have a topic that you guys had, but we have to figure out sh a way to show this creatively because these kids need to learn, but they need to pay attention as well. Like many times they don't want to. So it has to be fun, has to be interactive, and has to be educational. Many times we, in our class we did English and we sang songs, or we uh, wrote them out and like played games with them and offered them candy as well. <laughs>
So many teachers approached her and told her, hey, like, you have to clean up, but she just wouldn't listen. So I had to confront her and I had to say, this is what Kiramas expects from you, and you're not really meeting that, so you have to evaluate if Kiramas is actually a good program for you or not. And after that, I thought that the girl would change, but she never showed up again in my class. And this, like, although I probably didn't talk to her after, I probably, she taught me that in situations, we can't always expect people to react like we want, it, want them to. Because she didn't react like I, would, like I wanted her to. So yeah, that's what I learned about the animals. So here's some pictures. Uh, okay, so a lot of us have had interesting experiences with kids. And one story that I remember is um, this semester, this past semester, Lucy and I were taught English to first through fifth grade. And there was this girl in our class in freshman that her her name's Kiara, and she was in third grade. And from the first day, she was super interested in learning. She would always come to us um, before, during, after class, asking us how to say words that we hadn't taught them yet, or um, how to spell things. She was always asking us to like write her notebook. And you could tell that throughout the week, because we only see them on Saturdays, but you could tell that throughout the week she was practicing and she was trying to learn. And that's what we really wanted all of you to do. We really wanted them to. Um, have this level of education that she was showing. And even one time, we also went to Karamas with this um, kid from Korea, and she asked us if we could take her to him so that he could teach her words in Korean also. So she just really um, showed us how much like we may take education for granted, whereas they just need all the education they can get. So, like, I taught English with him and and basically, like in our class, we had children that you were, you all, you could honestly see that were passionate, that they were there because they wanted to, because they wanted to be there. But they were always, listen, they were always the children that um, were there because their parents thought that it was valuable to learn English. Uh, but like something that I found really like, like interesting and like, really, I felt really like connect. I felt really connected with one of my girls because. She would come into class every day. Her name was Mariela. She would come into class every day, and she would bring an English book with her because she had them at home, but she did, had no idea how to read them. And she would bring them to class so that we would read them to her and explain like every single word. So she would sit in class and ask questions like, "What is that word? What's that word?" And like this really like touched me. Like I really thought that it was yeah. It was nice that at yeah. the end she could understand like most of the questions. And I have a story with a girl that. Um, it's kind of, there's a happy ending, I guess you could say. Um, in my first semester, I was teaching math, and I, and I thought that it would be the most fun to teach the littlest kids, which, in hindsight, is hard. <laughs> um, so there was this one girl in my class. Uh, she was very much the class clown, always wanted the attention, never really stayed in her seat or actually paid much attention to the lesson. And one day, she just says, oh, I'm going to the bathroom. And 10 minutes pass, 15 minutes, half an hour passes, and I say, okay, obviously she's out in the bathroom. So I go out looking for her, and she starts running away from me. I have to run after her to the to the playground, and I catch up to her, and I say, why are you running away? We're teaching you. Uh, we're taking time out of our day. You're taking time out of your day. Um, that's not very fair. And it's really easy as teachers to paint these children in a bad light and to just go out and say, oh, they're just disruptive, they want attention, they're uh, misbehaving. But then she started talking to me, we, we ended up staying outside for the rest of the day, talking about uh, things that happened to her in her home, like she ha has to lie or else her mom gets upset and could hit her, or she always needs attention because she's like old. Hi everyone, I'm sorry to interrupt, I have a quick announcement. At 10.40, everyone should go to their Global Village classrooms. There will be snacks in there for you. If there is no snack in your classroom because it is occupied by a session right now, your Global Village leader will pick up a tray in 4.05 or 5.05. Thank you. Okay, so to sum up from her, I learned about empathy because it's easy to paint someone in a bad light and say that they're... The, the bad kid, but after learning what comes, like what goes behind how they act, it really is, uh, you, you put yourself in other people's shoes, and it's really, 
it's really an enlightening experience, and I have now a lot of respect for teachers. It's okay. hard. Okay, so the goals um, for our presentation are to, if any of you are from Sao Paulo or Santiago de Chile, to encourage you to find Karamas in your country and to bring it to your school, because it really is a great opportunity. And for the rest of you, to search for NGOs in your own country that you can bring to the school, or even look into bringing Karamas to your country, because it's really a great way to do it. We hope that eventually this, look, this is what the map looks like eventually expanding all around South America. We don't think it's great. <laughs> Maybe. And, and we want to create a united uh, front so that we work towards bettering our education system because we all have to work together to create a sustainable future. And one final quote to like conclude and close the poll up is um, by Nelson Mandela, that is, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And I hope you have gotten that from our presentation and we really do believe that and we really do believe that we're giving these children the weapon to change their world and their community. And we have... So we had a Jeopardy book. So if you want to reach out to Grandmas, we have all the links here. You could write these down. We also have a bit.ly about a process that, a step-by-step -step process towards bringing Grandmas your code. I don't know. Um, if you feel, <laughs> hopefully you feel uh, comfortable enough to contact us if you want uh, about bringing grandma to your country or helping uh, you bring an NGO or to your school. Also, if you want more chocolate, just you know. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have any questions? Like, thank you.